Mommy's trying to eat peanut butter and peas. This not your peanut butter. You're bad. All right, so back onto the Subaru, and I want to show you a couple things here. I uh, power washed both these bumpers inside and out, cleaned them as good as can be. Now this is a factory prepped bumper, and as you can see, the paint. I mean, we got a dent here, but the factory paint stayed even after power washing it, and it looks good. This one was the back bumper, and this was not factory paint because the power washer blew pretty much all the paint off of it. I still, boy, the water did not dry up on it. And this is what it looks like when you do not prep your surface before you paint it. Um, the power washer just pretty much blew all of the clear coat, base coat, <laughs> and some of the primer off because this was never prepped. It is uh, just as smooth as can be underneath. So we're going to prep it as good as we can. I'm not going to go crazy on this like I did with that Accord bumper. That was a pain in the butt. But I'm going to use like 80 grit and go over this and then go over it again with... Um, a 120 then we'll prime it and do a 400 over top of the primer so uh but that sucks because that's a lot more work than what i originally planned but um the back bumper after i get this part uh plastic welded back together and there was another spot that needed some work down here needed some work right here um but we'll get all that taken care of. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to do this episode is uh, we need to start scuffing. This one, I might do a little bit of glazing putty on this here. I'm not going to do anything with this because I'm going to leave all this. I'm not painting this center section here. So not doing anything with these scuffs. They're going to be there. Uh, these ones, I am going to probably sand and do a little bit of glazing putty this one has a slight dent to it so i might have to add some putty to that and then go over it with a glaze but i want this to actually look pretty good the front bumper so i i don't want that dent in it um the rear hatch is already prepped i just need a uh or like the surface of it i just need to wipe it down again and uh tape off everything but it's it's pretty much ready for paint so as grueling as it was, I hand sanded this whole back bumper. I uh, used 80 grit. Uh, it still needs some work, but it's it's in much better condition now. I did not sand this bumper yet. I just did 80 grit on um, the scratches here. I'm going to heat this up with a heat gun and see if this will pop out some. But I'm going to do a little bit of body work here. Then I took a heat gun. As you can see, this crack was spread apart. And it just didn't want to form back to shape. Now, if you look at it now, after me putting the heat gun on it, it uh, takes shape pretty well. And it's pretty close to where it needs to be. So I'm going to get a plastic welder out. We're going to do the steel mesh right here. And then we'll, we'll work it down around there and uh, get as much of that steel mesh in there to mend this bumper back together. So now while slightly indented now, I heated this up with the heat gun, uh, got it nice and hot, and then pushed on it from the back side, and it pretty much formed back to shape. It had a slight dent to it, and now it is 
just slightly indented. So glazing putty, it is for everything. I don't have to mix up anything different. So we'll do a little bit of glazing putty here, a little bit of glazing putty here, and uh, smooth this all out. All right, so when it comes to body work, I consider myself a beginner. Um, I did uh, get a couple of the scratches here, smooth those out. That crack, it, it may crack again. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I figured I'd try it anyways. Um, there was a spot here, sanded it down. What I'm going to do right now is I got these all cleaned up and prepped. I'm going to spot uh, prime these. I don't, I'm not priming this whole bumper because the paint is good on it. Uh, so I'm gonna spot prime these two places here with the Transtar, and then uh, we'll scuff the rest of the bumper with, uh, and the primer with 400 before uh, it's ready for paint. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, throw some primer on, and we'll see how it looks. Now what I've done so far, it took me all evening. I'm trying not to make this video boring, so I didn't want to bore you with a bunch of sanding and a bunch of putty and then more sanding and more putty and more sanding. So I'm just like, I'm giving you little snips of what all went on. Uh, this bumper looks really good now. Like that doesn't look like it had any damage there now. It's pretty smooth. Um, as for the scrapes over here, I can still see them just slightly through the primer, uh, but when we sand the whole bumper and the primer, that, uh, that'll that smooth out. Um, I'm priming this whole bumper uh, with Transtars, and that's why I'm not you know doing any spots or anything like that. Since this did not grip that good, I went over it with 80 grit, then went over it with 120, then uh, filled a couple spots, and I'm going to spray it at 120 and then we're going to have to scuff it again after that with uh, after we <clears throat> prime it with 320 or 400 and then it'll be ready for paint. The, the hatch is ready. Uh, tomorrow I plan on having all these parts done so hopefully it'll be a good and eventful day but you know this I am very much a beginner when it comes to all this stuff. So, uh, this is, if it doesn't turn out, it doesn't turn out. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm an expert at anything because I, obviously I'm not. Uh, I'm a mechanic. I don't even think I'm like, I'm not the best mechanic either. I'm okay. So, uh, you know, we'll see how this stuff turns out. So, stay tuned. Out. Really? Can I just have them in peace? 
Please? 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 What do you want? You don't even like him. You give her a chip and she just stares at it and then he comes over and eats it. Because he's a meanie. You're meanie. Alright, so there's supposed to be like three or four people come look at the uh, Jimmy today. I don't think they're all going to show because that's how it always goes. <laughs> that rhymed. Um, but I need to get this thing fully coated in primer. It's pretty much ready except for cleaning. So I need to wipe it down really good, get it really clean before we put a good coat on that. This, I sanded the... The primer got it all feathered out, and uh, it turned out really good. It's really smooth now. So then I gotta scuff the rest of the bumper, and I think I'm gonna do on this. Um, the grill is this color, so I think I'm gonna leave this line that is right here, just inside this groove. I'm gonna leave it that that gray. So it matches the grill, and then I'm going to do the face of this black. So, And it, it's really hard to prep inside there also. So I'm just going to sand the face of this uh, and the top. And I don't know if I'm going to leave these black or if I'm going to paint them. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to get that prep first, and then we'll come to the... natural habitat you get underneath that thing you get under there all right still no sale yet but the guy is very interested so that's good um on another note this bumper turned out wonderful look how smooth that is yay me i do need to sand it with uh 400 it's a wifey um but I'm gonna do it off off camera. I'm gonna sand that. I need to scuff that, and I need to prep the rear end for, for paint back here. For rounds of paint I sanded this I cleaned them twice I went over everything twice wiped them down completely uh, sanded this prepped it so that we have a silver line on the inside I think that's gonna look really nice then over here uh, since we did some body work and uh, we had to scuff this side black 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 everything is black and right there's the body work we did black so it's time for rounds of black it's time to black some eyes now I could be totally wrong but I got semi gloss black instead of gloss black so I figured the clear coat would stick to it better I could be wrong it's just a theory of mine and so that's what I'm doing and this is what we're putting on everything let's go down Well, we will not be clear coating today. 
and I'll show you why. Anyways, the hatch turned out perfect. So now let me show you why we won't be clear coating today. It is very hard to see. The front bumper is honestly not too bad, but it has runs. The back bumper is horrible. I have runs everywhere. And the hatch turned out perfect. But the side pieces have runs. These side pieces. But the hatch turned out perfect. That's semi-gloss black. It's perfect. But I will have to scuff it now because we're not going to have a chemical bond because I'm going to have to wait. And I don't want to mix up that clear coat and only do the hatch because then I won't have enough to do everything else. So there's a little bit of runs on this side too. Not near as bad, but they're there. And I don't want those runs in it. I think we can make it look better. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to wait until tomorrow. It just really sucks because I was... I was definitely ready tonight. I was gonna, I was gonna do it. Wanted to have it done. But whatever. I guess um, we can see if we can wire the stereo in. The stock stereo is just not working. It's there's like hardly any sound coming out of it. I got that one deck out of a um, Forester, so, and it looked like it's the correct kit to go in this. So I'm gonna see if I can just bolt it right in there. Look at these runs along the bottom. Oh, the whole length. Oh, you see it? Oh, they're everywhere. There, they, you can definitely see it right there in the reflection. Yeah, real nice. I think it's too cold in here. That, well, that, and I was laying it down too thick. I was laying her down heavy. <laughs> <It'll be heavy. laughs> Next question, and you guys tell me what you think, because I, I don't know. Since those back fenders are so much bigger, the front fenders are smaller, the over fenders, uh, and the front tires stick out further than the back ones, uh, do we put the back ones up front and the front ones in the back? And then here's my thing, chop the back ones like right here or something like that, you know, so that part of the tire sticks out on the front. I don't know. I don't know what it would look like. But then I'm thinking I'd have to put the wheel spacers on the front also because it would look weird with those big fenders. I, I'm really I'm on the fence right now with what I'm doing here. I think, um, you know what? Let's throw those back spacers on. I have this thing in. I think I have it in the right spot to lift it. Yeah. I think so. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and throw these uh, spacers on the back. See what they look like. That's kind of a bummer. Those aren't the size I thought they were. <laughs> so those aren't going to work. So we're not going to run wheel spacers because I'm not spending more money on this thing than what I already have in it. So, uh, yeah. So we're just going to have to get creative. Um, I still, well, like I said, this, this bumper is different. I think it's going to look good. Black bumpers, gray. Um, might do a little bit of body work here so we're gonna bed line this i believe yeah this thing's gonna look mean when it's done but i still need to figure out the flare thing i'm still not sold on this setup but i don't know and maybe once i see it on there maybe yes but i don't know <laughs> all right 
So I actually like the look of the big fender flares on the front. I think it it makes it look wider. It gives it an aggressive look. But the back ones being smaller makes it look odd. Makes it look awkward. <laughs> if you look at it down the side, the flares actually stick out about the same amount because the front is skinnier but it still looks odd although i like the um bigger flares on the front i just can't deal with having bigger ones in the front and smaller ones in the back it bothers me now so we're just gonna have to go back to bigger ones in the back and smaller ones in the front and and just deal with what we got uh, I think this thing is still gonna be bad when it's done but let's go ahead and throw the stereo in so nice check this out from Forrester to legacy I don't have to do jack squat I don't even know if this deck works All right, so before I start checking fuses on the car, um, I'm gonna get my own meter out. All right, so I just tested the wires. I'm, I'm like not getting power to anything. So uh, the stock deck may have been good. Whatever, we're gonna put an aftermarket one in it because we like to jam. So I'm gonna mess with some fuses, come back, and uh, hopefully have this uh, radio powered up here in a second. Well, go figure. <laughs> this deck is dead. Um, we did have a bad fuse after I put the fuse in. This thing will uh, hum for a second like it's trying to find a CD or something. The screen will not turn on. I'll put power to it. Hold on a second here. And it doesn't matter what I do. The fuse in the back is good. No matter what buttons I push, this deck just will not power up. So the deck is burnt out. I don't know the chances of that are, but we at least got our wiring adapter and we do have a, another CD player right there. Although I should probably just plug the stock one back in. Nah, we're gonna put a, we're gonna put that in it. Let's do that. So at this point, this speaker is non-existent. We got nothing. So I gotta tear this door apart. Might have to get a speaker. Run away. Run away. Okay, so some of these door clips were stuck in there so hard that I actually broke part of the door card. So I may have to put some screws in it, but I couldn't believe that they would not come out. There's a clip there that would not come out, a clip there, and then there's one right here. I mean, they are, I don't know what's up with those. They're in there solid. So, anyways, um, I don't know if you guys recognize this speaker. This is the Rockford Fosgate speaker that came out of the Lancer door that I got, the aftermarket one or the, the one that I put on the car. Uh, the car didn't have Rockford Fosgate, so I took this out and put the regular one in. But the, it's, it's a good speaker, and it's the same size. And I think if uh, I can get the adapter ring to bolt to this somehow, I'll be able to just bolt it in. So 
I'm gonna try that, try to see if I can get this to, to bolt up. But otherwise, I don't know how I'm gonna get it to mount because this speaker is not like a regular speaker. It's got a whole plastic housing and everything. So I need to try to find some way to get screws into those plastic supports back there. So we'll see what I come up come up with. My, my battery on my camera is getting low, so I don't have much time. <laughs> So there you go. We got uh, the door panel. I put new clips in. I have a, a thing of door clips. I put new clips in this door. It's not coming off there. This speaker is tight. It's up against the, the plastic grill, but, and it kind of pushes the door panel out a little bit, but I think I haven't even tried to shut the door yet. Let's Let's see how it shuts. It shuts fine, and all the other clips are in. So, um, all right, everything works. Yeah. And although I do really like that semi-gloss finish, it's gonna have a gloss finish when it's done after we clear coat it. But I do think that's really cool, and it's an idea for maybe a vehicle down the road. I do like semi-gloss. I think it looks really cool. Um, so we're gonna close this episode out right now. Uh, my memory card full and I'm tired so on that note I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I know body work sucks watching me do it probably isn't as bad as doing it so uh, if you enjoyed it go check out some of my other videos my old projects like subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped